I see power come upon your heart. I see resurrection power come upon your heart. Your heart shall not be weak anymore. Your heart shall be strong. Your heart shall be contagiously connected to opportunities. The Lord shall uphold your hands. And I see the Lord breathe upon your heart. Now that is the first word that came to my spirit. The second word was the encounter I woke up with yesterday morning. I heard the voice of the Lord say, It is not yet an end for you. That's a vision. Because I was ministering to some set of people who thought that their feeling of the moment and the experience of the moment it looks like an end of their dream, an end of their hope, and an end of their expectation. And I say, I have a word from the Lord. That thing you are looking as an end is not an end for you. I say the power of God crossing you over that particular experience. And I decree today by the power of God, whatsoever has been concluded as an end on your life, on your dream, on your hair, the Lord shall turn it to a beginning of a new chapter. God's name is the beginning and the ending. Do I have a witness in the house? So when it looks like an end, God comes in and it becomes a beginning. For the conclusion of men marks the beginning of God's miracle. A pre-concluded opinion about your existence. I ask the Lord to reverse it. I ask the Lord to make you a miracle. To make your house a miracle. To make your family a miracle. Come on, somebody shout, God, make me a miracle. As you remain standing, listen to this. Listen to this. First Samuel chapter 3. I expect that everyone would have been very, very familiar. Just stay where you are. I don't want you to be distracted. You get it later. After Samuel had had the encounter, Eli invited him. Verse 16. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? one fearful thing i have discovered is that you might be existing and don't be moving not knowing that god has withdrawn from you and one of the things that will make god to withdraw from you is your rebellion your disobedience you are watching yourself not doing the things you used to do before with joy you are watching yourself go prayerless and you are not mindful about it you are not feeling that something is wrong spiritually. You are watching yourself get so bitter for nothing. Right? Nothing excites you anymore. Something is already happening somewhere. You are losing your spiritual grip. And the devil is happy about the state you are growing into. Which is not your portion. Eli was unmindful. And they called Samuel. Tell me the thing that the Lord has said unto thee. And thank God for faithful Samuel. Who will not hide anything. I believe God. After this meeting, your children will start dreaming. Yeah. Are we here? The eyes of your children will be opening. Yeah. They will start seeing the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Look at verse 17. And they said, what is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. Go do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me, as all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him, every wheat, and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord, let him do what he made him do. You know one of the things that God told him? God told Samuel, I have told Eli 
that I will judge him and all his house. God has told a lie. He didn't do anything about it. You just had a dream. You are just seeing God or angel saying, I will judge you. You wake up, you are still normal. You put your food, you eat. Your spirit is telling, telling you, I will judge you. You've just done something evil. You just sinned. And your conscience felt nobody knows about it. The part that nobody knows about it does not mean that you are free. Are we here? I'm smart enough. I've covered it. You can cover it. You can cover it up. God said, I will judge the house of Eli. I will judge Eli for what he has done. God told him. Rather than praying, God have mercy. He ignored it. And God left him and went to a little boy called Samuel and told him what he has told him. And he wanted to find out. And Samuel confirmed that God said he has told you that he will judge your house. Rather than still portraying, God, I am sorry. Don't judge my house. God has not judged the house. Remember this. I will judge you. Does not mean I have judged you. When God says, I will judge you, God wants to reposition you. God wants to revive you. God wants to bring you nearer to himself. He wants to see if you can be remorse, if you can change. So he had not judged him. But he was not ready to take a new position. And they say, Shebi is God. He can do whatever he likes. Brethren, God is not our mate. Let's not relate with God as our mate. He can kill when he wants to kill. There was a day in the church service in Acts of the, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Service was going on. A husband and wife lied with their tithe. They died in the church. The church continued. Are we here? What would you have done if you were Eli? You would have cried out, God, in your judgment, remember your mercy. Have mercy upon me and my house. I don't know what our children are doing where they are. But every parent that loves their future and legacy, I want you to pray this prayer. And if you are a child and you are in this meeting, I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray the prayer of mercy. That God's hand shall be restored upon your house. So you start winning again. So you start feeling guilt in your spirit. And start living again. Somebody pray. My father. You are my creator. You have a right to judge me. You have a right to kill me. But I know you are merciful God. In your anger. In your judgment. Against me and my heart. God have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Over my children. Over my life. Over my spouse. God have mercy. God have mercy. Let your mercy swear. By the blood of Jesus. Let your mercy swear. And let your mercy redeem. I read them, I read them, my house, I read them, my family. Lisa Baba ba Posukete. I invoke the anointing of mercy upon the roof of your house, upon the roof of my house, upon the roof of Dominion God. And I say to you today that the mercy of God shall stay against the judgment of God, against the anger of God, against the judgment of God. In Jesus mighty name we pray. I watch some of you praying the prayer I'm calling and I'm wondering if actually you are here. Because exactly what Eli did. 
you only die once and after that is judgment but if you have to die you have to die well you have to die well with understanding that you know where you're going when you die under god's anger you may go to hell those things you've done might be the reason for the things you're passing through but god's mercy when it's ignited on your life it can restore your roots it can restore your ways it can restore your expectations lift up your right hand shout god you are God. In all the ages of life, there's nothing hidden from your eyes. You knows my going out and my coming in. You knows me when I'm asleep. You knows me when I'm awake. You are my God. You have the right over my life. But this morning, have mercy upon my life and make me live again restore my peace restore my joy restore my slayer restore my dread restore my destiny restore my how restore my prosperity restore my prayer fire restore me oh god In Jesus mighty name we pray. I still want to spend another five, five, five minutes with in prayers. Somebody will pray. Oh Lord my God. Lord my God. Shout it like an army. Lord enough is enough. enough. Now that your judgment is taken away. Arise. Disconnect me. From destiny waster. Anything attached in my life. Attached to my marriage. Attached to my career. To waste my life. Arise. Arise. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough of my delay. Enough of my explanation. My father. Arise. Disconnect me. From every of my waste, destiny wasters. Anything wasting my life. Anything wasting my destiny. Anything wasting my future. Father. Disconnect me from it. In Jesus name we pray somebody will pray again oh Lord my God enough is enough by anointing a higher fire by anointing a higher fire by anointing a higher fire disconnect me from my destiny with us and the terror and the power and the edge and the humor wasting my life wasting my finance wasting my destiny wasting my opportunity higher fire higher fire higher fire higher fire higher fire higher fire, higher fire, higher fire from the Lord In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to round up these prayer sections in this meeting. Because I know that the Lord said it is a month of prayers. Are we here? When Jesus was buried, killed and buried in dishonor, he was buried like a criminal. He was killed like a criminal. He was buried in dishonor. He was not mourn. His people, his children he raised were not permitted to mourn him. He was buried in dishonor. But the Bible says, where the enemy were celebrating victory over him, God resurrected him from the grave. He resurrected in glory. Glory, higher than any other glory he had ever manifested. I don't know for how long you've been down. But before the end of April, I see you going up. Yeah. I see your house going up. Yeah. I see your children going up. Yeah. The thing that has made you cry, it shall make you laugh. Yeah. 
Are we still here? And the Bible says, everyone he appeared to, nobody recognized he was the one. He needed to speak before they would recognize that he was the one. Your later days shall be better than your former days. Yeah. You have seen enough of pain and issues and trouble. It is time to see the glory of God for your life. Yeah. Somebody will pray, my father, yeah. open my eye yeah. to see your glory. Open my eye to see your glory and the glory of your throne upon my destiny open my eye that I may see your glory and the glory of your throne open my eye that I may see your glory and the glory of your throne open my eye that I may dream your glory and the glory of your throne open my eye that I may see your wonders and the wonders of your throne In Jesus' name we pray. Put your right hand on your, on your ear. Now, Samuel was hearing the voice of God because he has followed God well through a line. A child does not know, know the voice of his father. He's a suspect. You are in a house. Your father is by the door. Who is there? I'm the one. Call your name. You should know the voice of your father, spirit to spirit. Come on, are we here? If you're hearing the devil all the time, telling you, fight, refuse, don't forgive, that's the voice of the devil. It means you are far from God. After this encounter, you will hear the voice of God again. Put your right hand on your ear say my father open my ear to hear your voice the sound of your voice the sound of your voice to lead my life to lead my life and my destiny open my ear that i may hear you open my ear that i may hear you the sound La de la boa, la gabata tua, iko badu dile na hana, la dude dali a pasa pataria. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I expect in the next one week that so many of you that have lost God's fellowship will recover Amen. you will see god in your dreams Amen. you will hear god in your prayers Amen. you will retain god's instructions in your spirit Amen. you will be more closer to god in intimacy Amen. than anyhow you have followed him before Amen. today i anoint your ear Amen. you will no longer hear the devil manipulating and controlling you by their negative sound you will hear the sound of heaven you will hear the voice of God you will hear the sound of heaven you will hear the voice of God I hear God you will hear God you will hear God and you will follow God in the name of Jesus Amen. finally in this hour of prayer you will no longer speak any words and I want you don't shout all the day on scriptural voice of words. Okay? You don't speak on scriptural words and return back to God in prayers and expect Him to respect your voice. Every time you say on scriptural things, you defy your mouth and disqualify it from being honored by God. Even when things are so amazing. I only think about it and I rule over my spirit because my mouth is an organ, an instrument before God. I won't use it anyhow. Our mothers, our fathers, in all of your exercise of your authority in the place of your assignment, guide how and what goes out of your mouth. If you can overcome it, 
whatever you say from now we be had in heaven touch your mouth i've given you a mouth with wisdom that the enemy will not take advantage of your existence this morning i anoint your mouth receive anointing and oil of wisdom you will not spend your mouth for the devil you will spend your mouth for god you will know the word of god you will follow the word of god you will follow the counsel of god and as you speak it you will see god in jesus mighty name somebody say amen. amen lift up your hands and bless the name of the lord you may be seated thank you thank you can you give jesus a clap offering <clears throat> quickly this morning i want to talk on um, divine appearance um we, we have already had a very beautiful section of bible reading and i will please appeal again that everybody be seated on their chair it's not going to be a long message but it's just going to be an eye-opening to what happened when jesus resurrected this message is supposed to be in two parts may god helping us maybe on wednesday we look at the second part praise god now divine appearance uh, jesus died and was buried in the normal grave where humans are buried but i was told that he was even buried in a borrowed grave be donated by one of the secret disciples called joseph the arimathea joseph the arimathea was mentioned as a secret sponsor of jesus ministry and then while they were trying to dishonor the body he was a noble man so he came and appealed to them that they give him the body of jesus praise god and they carried it you know like in this age that we're living a lot of people don't want to be buried anyhow when they die so some people go ahead to go and buy their own you know what it is i told you a story one day when one of our friends lost his mother and we went there to the cemetery and then in the cemetery we saw a line for the whole family and you will see marked in the cemetery occupied empty occupied empty you know you are not moving around if you move around you will not count anything to this world people alive are bought their grave where they will be buried and they build it the way they want it marble it the way they want it and they will write on it empty with me the grave is empty at the moment and i heard the lady say this occupied grave senior this one that is empty this one is occupied a senior the other one that is empty and the whole family names are there and i asked him don't you have land don't you have village he said no in our family because of our christian virtues we believe that rapture will take place first in the cemetery are we here because some of us our christianity is not extended to our last days our christianity is just narrowed to our daily existence miracle and then by the time we close our eyes we don't know what happens to this honorable body so is it a sin to make preparation for your last day and i ask a question jesus did not even know that he was going to die that the time he died you remember he was in prayer asking god take away this cup okay so he knows they will die but he was not thinking the death will come the time it came i don't know when i'm going to go and that's why i tell everybody around me don't ever see me as your god i'm only showing you the ways of god praise god but the truth is that one experience will happen to all of us but the preparation you make will determine how you go to where you're going so joseph the arimate recognized and valued 
the relationship he had with Jesus, I knew that Jesus was a holy man, and he had bought a virgin grave, okay, Saipoka, where no one has ever used, and he, he bought it for himself, but he donated it. That was where they, buy, they buried Jesus. Go and read Matthew 27. It's there, down the story from verse 50. It's just there, the story is there. And then, I discovered one thing. A holy man, okay, buried in a virgin holy grave that belongs to a holy man. Come on, are we here? So, all the things about Jesus, from the beginning to the burial, we are holy and saintly. How come that a Christian will die and non-believers will carry him and be jumping up and down? If they have to carry the body to jump up and down, it should be believers. And some of them will say, give us a gogoro to drink. Give us gin to drink. This was the model I found in Christ. And that was the reason. You know, holiness begat holiness. When God sees holiness, God comes too quickly. But sin is a reproach. So when we treasure sin, we put God apart. We put God far. But begin to live a right life. When something touch you like this, you just see God there. Is there anything? No, no, Lord, I'm okay. Praise God. It's so magnetic. It's so magnetic. It is your own pride. Your own honor. To live holy life as unto the Lord. Are we here? The word he has spoken were prophecies. He has said, After the third day, I will resurrect. I told you the other Sunday how Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, came to the grave early morning. And they were looking for Jesus. What do I call them? I call them holy seekers. And you know that when he finally appeared, he appeared to Mary Mandalay. And that Mary Mandalay was that same woman he rescued from the town who wanted to kill him, to kill her for adultery. Praise God. You remember? It was the same woman. And that's the first woman that saw Jesus in a glorified body and could not know that it was Jesus. Because he saw Jesus with a, a dishonored body. And when Jesus resurrected, he appeared in a glorified body. And so he couldn't recognize him. It's just like when a miracle has happened to you. And some people that know you with one Jew, you were wearing like me those days. We not know you again. Praise God. I am saying to you, a resurrection miracle shall hit your family. Let me give you the point so we can go to dedication. The first appearance was to holy seekers. In John chapter 20, verse, verse 1, we saw that they went there. In Mark chapter 16, verse 9 and 10, Mark 16, verse 9 and 10, I think the first, the, 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 John 20, verse 1 said, The first day of the week, cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. When it was yet dark. You, you, you imagine that. So she was an early riser with a burden. Apparently that night she did not sleep. Okay, she, she went out so early in the morning. People that has a culture of praying very early has a culture of winning very well in the day. When it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre, go to Mark chapter 16, verse 9 and 10. Mark 16, verse 9 and 10. I uh, don't need to stay on the screen. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Are we here? He appeared first to where? To who? Why? Because she's the one that led the other two women to go to the grave. 
where a natural mind could not connect. God appears to you based on your body for his kingdom. God appears to you based on your seeking culture. Whatever you seek is what God will come to you to show. When you begin to shop for sin, they will appear to you to show you how to sin well. When you begin to shop for God to do right thing and to know what to do, you will see God without struggling. I want to announce to you today, I don't know what you have been seeking. I don't know what brought you to the church today. I don't know what you've been praying on since the moment began. But my God shall appear to you. I didn't hear amen. My God shall appear to your house. He shall appear to your business. He shall appear to your family. My God shall appear to you. Somebody shout, God appear to me. I believe the word of God that God appears to seek us. Somebody say, I am a seeker. A seeker of God. I want to see you this week. Oh Lord my God in the works of my hand I want to see you this week in my house I want to see you this week in my marriage I want to see you this week in my hand Lord I am a seeker of you appear to me are we still here verse 10 look at verse 10 was also saw there and she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and weep why others were mourning as at the time jesus appeared to mary mandaline the disciples and the rest of them who received the same word together were snoring and mourning and crying but somebody story and condition has changed come on are we here Somebody that knows you and two of you have become like a um, mate by reason of the same situation and experience. Your own story will change. And they will hear that your story has changed. And the change of your story will give them hope that God will visit their own story. I say to you again, God shall appear to you this week. Rise to your feet and shout it seven times. God shall appear to me this week. shall appear to me this week amen it's a prophecy and my mouth have been anointed come on away here so i've invited god expect god you've seen enough of devil you're going to see god this week number two he appeared to confused disciples you saw it there in verse 10 go to verse 11 we read through to verse 13 and they when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her magdalene believed not are we here so people will hear your testimony this week they won't believe come on over here your eyes will see something radiant and people will hear that your eye has seen something radiant and they won't believe go to verse 12 after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country that is through the city of Emmaus. okay that discourse that they had he appeared to them and they talked with them for a long time analyzing everything that has happened in israel and they never knew he was the one one of the prayers i wanted to pray this morning have been praying already that your eyes will be open praise god Sometimes even even our pastors, you have a pastor, but you don't even know the pastor. You only know your problem and the impossibility surrounding your problem. Are we here? Then he appeared to them on the way. Go to verse 13. Look at what happened there. Verse 13. And they went and told it unto the residue neither believe they them as well everyone that had the story of mary mandalene did not believe praise god 
Until Jesus himself appeared to them. Until Jesus appeared to them. You know the word I have for you now? I don't know what has confused you in life. But let your confusion not doubt the reality of God and his resurrection. Can I tell you something? Look at this. It was true he was abused. He was accused. He was killed. He was buried. But it is more true that he resurrected. So your problem is not God's problem. The problem you have is your ignorance of what God can make out of your problem. Come on over here. The devil does not have a final say over the church. It's God that has a final say over the church. God will heal you when you have come to an alignment that God can heal. I serve a healing God. God can prosper you when you have come to an alignment that I serve a prosperous God. Come on over here. They, 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 look, they did all they can do. They did their worst. But the best of God came and changed their worst. I don't know who have done you what. I don't know what they have said about your life. I don't know their conclusion about your destiny. But as long as they did not create you, they do not have a final word over you. Are you hearing me? They do not have a final word over your life. And they cannot have a final decision, a final verdict over your life. God, you are creator. Had a final word over your life. I want to say to you today, as long as God will believe in you and that you believe in God, from this way, your story shall change. Come, my brother, let me lay hand on you. Quickly. Nathan, the power that want to kill you will kill themselves. Amen. The Bible said that the enemy shall turn back at the gate of dominion. That is the matching prophetic pillar in this house. And everything that has been done to block you from moving into your rest. Resurrection fire is upon this house. From today... I judge the sentence of stagnation over your destiny. I break it in Jesus' name. I break it in Jesus' name. Every mark of distortion on your life, I cast it out. I cast it out. I cast it out. Every, every power sitting on your breakthrough, I will see them now. I will see them now. I will see them now. Receive your liberation. Amen. Go now and walk into your opportunities Amen. and begin to manifest the hand of God upon your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It, it, it appeared to be confused. They became more confused because their heart is known to impossibilities. How can it rise? You have seen a spirit. How can it work? You will hear a news that Caro has bought a car. I said, Caro, that I've been dashing one naira. It's not you are dashing her money. It is God appearing to her. Praise God. When God appears to your life, you will become a helper to your helpers. Listen, nobody was sent from heaven to go and be wasted on earth. Everyone was sent from heaven to go and manifest. And I want to say to you that every voice and every heart that have vowed that you will turn to nothing on earth this morning, if I be a man of God, I judge them and I destroy their heart upon your destiny in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, my God, my God. Appear, again to me. appear again to me. Number three, he appeared to the doubting Thomas. Everybody was finally converted. They believed when Jesus appeared to them. He came into the house where they were, and then he told them that he's the one, and they all believed, and they remembered his word. Thomas was not there. And when Thomas came back and they told him, The Lord has risen. The Lord has risen. And they said, Me, my name is Thomas. How we never believe, except I see his hand 
and I put my finger there to see where the nail pierced. I saved, I see the, the, the leg, I see where the nail is. He told them the condition for that, the condition that must be met before he will believe the resurrection of Jesus. Come on over here. I'm going to show you a scripture right now and let us look at it together. I call it the book of Thomas. John chapter 20, 26 to 29. John chapter 20, 26 to 29. Are you there? And after eight days, again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. Come on, are we here? Now, you are getting a revelation there. I don't know who shut your doors. And it's not important who shut your doors. Whether their names are witchcraft or courtes or marine, I don't know who shut you and where they have shut you. Even if they have shut your womb or shut your sight or shut your leg, it doesn't matter who shut him. If Jesus has resurrected, it means that the invisibility of God can be made visible in your impossibility. It means that the invisibility of God can be made possible in your impossibility. It means that the invisibility of God can be made possible in your impossibility. Are you here? The door was shut. Jesus did not need the key to enter the door. In a glorified body, he enters anywhere he wants to enter. That's why he can enter inside you. That's why he entered the womb of Mary. Praise God. Without a key, without a contact. Listen to me today. Every door that has been mechanically and demonically shot by the same power and motion that brought Jesus to disciple without a physical door, I declare your door open. I declare your door open. I declare your door open. Your marriage open. Your work open. Your sight open. Your business open. Your destiny open. I break a shot open. So much shot Opa! Opa! Appear and open my doors. I see doors opening. Unexpected doors, I see them opening. Doors of favor opening. Connections opening. Somebody will jump on your feet and shout. I see my doors open. Hey, Linia Manuda, Ikapata, Rodegede, Ladulia Caparaba, miracles of open door. I declare upon your life, I declare upon your heart, I declare upon your business. I see your doors open. Are we here? He said the doors being shut and stood in the midst. When Jesus stand in the midst of you, the devil that had been in charge of that situation will disappear. And say, peace be unto you. Their confusion disappeared. Their doubt disappeared. Now go to verse 27. You have been said, let's try to get it through. We'll get it through. I will say here. Then said he to Thomas. Even the man who doesn't want to believe was forced to believe. By this resurrection meeting. The test that you don't even want to believe about God. You will be forced to believe it. When you see my miracle. You will be forced to believe that God is real. When you see my miracle. Come on help me and not to somebody by your side. When you see my manifestation. When you see my miracle, you will believe that my God is real. You will believe that there's a miracle. And you believe that there's an appearance. God is going to appear to your life. He's going to surprise the show. I don't know who is in the village that is saying you can never make it. You will come to that village. You will ride on a homer chair. You will park the chair. And they will say, who is your owner? I say, I am the one. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. The the Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. Come and say what the Lord has done. <laughs> he 
His name is Good God. Choma ho, Choma. I serve a good God. Your sin and not for be shame and reproaches of the devil. It is your turn to manifest in honor and glory of my God and your God. In the name of Jesus, right? Can we conclude it? Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. Hmm. I mean, say, Michael, you're you not Thomas, so praise God. Now, look at it. Then, reach either thy finger and behold my hand, and reach either thy hand and thrust it into my side. Okay, you know what he's checking? Those wounds and bruises and pierced, he's checking them. You want to be sure that it's the same one? Okay. And trust your side. And be not faithless. <laughs> but believe it. Landi kapatalara. Resem nyo pa. Lasudi gadabadoa. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am the one. But to convince you that they're not telling you story. You have been religious and all. Resurrection was allowed to make you see the reality of Christianity. Without resurrection, there's nothing to believe. And can I say to you, it is not those that put him in the grave that brought him out. So it is not those that are against you that matters. It is the one that will undo what they have done that matter. And the one that will do what has been done is Jesus. So your faith is in Jesus. It's higher than the power that I guess you this morning. I release fire of resurrection. I undo whatever that I'm done over your life, over your house, over your head, over your family. In the name of Jesus, I undo Lazuka Patata Rabadabadaba. O soto tiliana, ba la ba da ba da ba. I am told, whatsoever I've been told against you, in the name of Jesus. And Thomas confessed, verse twenty-eight. He said, then said he to. Are you still there? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, my doubt is over. He became a follower. Everything you had, is, listen, that was Thomas doubting the resurrection. But the greatest issue is we doubting ourselves, doubting our possibilities. Promise us by the covenant. When we are standing on the appointment in the covenant, every time you are doubting yourself, you have made it impossible for anyone to believe you. Jesus was doubted, but Jesus never doubted himself. Are we here? Believe in your ability. Believe in the promises of God for your life. He's a healer. He can heal you. He's a connector. He can connect you. Believe you can be married. Believe you can own every good thing of life. Believe you cannot die in the state you are now. There's a man called Simeon. He had a dream when he saw the Lord Jesus. And God told him, you will not die until you have seen the salvation of Israel. And everybody will tell God, you promise me I will not die. When sickness come to him, he say, God, you promised me I will not die until my eye has seen the salvation. That kept him for a long time. The promises of God is what nurtures your hope. Stop listening to men 
and what they are saying about you. They don't know your identity. They don't know who you are. They don't know where you are coming from. They don't know the secret of your God. That your God is a God of signs, wonder, and miracle. And by miracle, signs, and wonder, your story can be changed. I want to say to you, I see your church cut off. I see your slavery cut off. I see your project cut off. I see your glory manifested. I see your life manifested. I see your power manifested. Somebody say, my glory. Appear by fire. Appear by fire. Verse 39. I see have one to give you that is very strong. Verse 39, 29. Are you there? Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. There is no way you cannot see what you believe. Otherwise, it means you never believed. From today, your faith shall power your belief. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. He appeared, the last one, to hungry disciples. Three days, they were so hungry. Because when Jesus was with them, there was no reserve. And the reserve they had, Judas had spent it to betray him. <laughs> Are we here? So they had no reserve to live on. And the scripture said, in John 21, Verse 9 to 13, very quickly, we want to look at it, and I want to tell you that God has all it takes to help you meet your needs. Do I have a witness in the house? They were hungry, and God helped them to meet their needs, and they attended to their hunger. Whatever you are hungry of, this week is your week of miracles. Jesus said unto him, no, go back. 21 John 21 Are you with me? John 21 verses 9 to 13 Thank God I have a Bible Praise God As soon As soon then as they were come to land they saw a fire of coal there and fish laid there on and bread. Three things they saw. They saw fire, they did not sit. Are we here? As soon as they came, you know, they went fishing out of their assignment, looking for survival, and they caught nothing because God was not there, Jesus was not there. But as soon as they came to land, they saw, okay, that time they have Jesus, they've had, he has already set the fire for them. Set the fish on the fire, made the bread on the fire. Then they appeared to them in the sea, in their wilderness, in their struggle. And they asked them, since you've been looking for fish, have you caught any? They said, no, it's not the same season. The same story of Peter. So the witch after Peter came back to Peter after he disconnected from Jesus. And they had the same experience. You know when we have the same dream and the same experience, we go back to sin. But the moment we get out of the scene and begin to walk with him in glory, we begin to see the future that we are ordained to live. And he said to them, throw the net again to the right. And they throw the net again to the right. You know, you are going to win again. When Jesus appears, is to make you win again. It's 